So sometimes medications are ordered to fall within a particular range of values. Because of this, a titration will be necessary. So if you've taken a chemistry class, in chemistry, a titration is where you take uh, an, a solution with some unknown concentration and mix it with a solution that has a known concentration and very slowly and gradually until a chemical reaction occurs. And then when that a chemical reaction occurs, you use that information to um, figure out what the concentra unknown concentration is of your original solution that you started with. So the idea is pretty much this, well, not pretty much the same, but similar here, except for we're mix mixing patients and medication. So we're titrating the medication, we're adding it slowly to the patient until the, res the desired response is achieved. Uh, and so what happens is we end up with a range of values that's been ordered, a lower, a lower value and a higher value, and we need to figure out the correct dosage based on that lower value and higher value for our particular patient. So I've got an example here. Um, an IV line was ordered to titrate between 2 and 4 micrograms per kilogram per minute, and the patient weighs 60 kilograms. Um, the IV solution contains 60 milligrams of drug in 300 milliliter solution, and we want to determine the rate of flow in terms of milliliters per hour. So we need the lower uh, limit for the rate of flow and the upper limit for the rate of flow. And I'm going to want that in milliliters per hour. So that's where, what I'm trying to achieve, is milliliters per hour in the end. We're a lower limit in milliliters per hour and an upper limit in milliliters per hour. All right, so I'm going to start with the lower limit. And your book goes through a, a process with a few steps, and you are welcome to follow that process. It's pretty much the same thing that we, we are going to do here. I feel like if you I feel like the steps to this are pretty logical. So if you just think through them rather than memorizing a process, I think I think you can solve these. Um, but uh, when you first start. Uh, these kinds of problems, sometimes it's helpful to have that process. So if you need to use that process, that is okay too. So we're going to start with the lower limit. <coughs> and I see what's been ordered is between 2 and 4 micrograms per kilogram per minute. So our lower limit is going to be the 2 micrograms per kilogram per minute. So 2 micrograms per kilogram per minute, which looks absolutely terrible, but I promise it'll get better. Um, <clears throat> and we know the patient weighs 60 kilograms. So based on this, we need to figure out the dose for the patient. So that's the first, based on the weight. So that's the first thing we're going to do. We're going to figure out the dose for the patient. So the patient weighs 60 kilograms, so if we take this and multiply by 60 kilograms, look what happens to our kilograms, right? Because we have 2 micrograms per kilogram per minute, and we need 60 kilograms worth, if that makes any sense. So we multiply by our 60 kilograms, and you end up with 120 micrograms per minute. All right, so... We've got the dose for our patient, and now we just really need to figure out, um, we've got how much, the dosage based on our patient's weight, and now we need to figure out how much of the IV solution to give. So we know there are 60 milligrams of the drug in 300 milliliters. So figure out. Our second step is to figure out our amount of IV solution. So we know there are 60 milligrams per 300 milliliters. But we want our answer to be in what milliliters per hour. So we want the milliliters on top and the unit of time on bottom. So here's my milliliters, right? So I want to end up with that guy on top. So I'm going to write 300 milliliters per 60 milligrams. And then I know I need 120 micrograms per minute. But do you see the problem that I have here? 
So the problem is that I've got milligrams and micrograms for my weight. They don't match up. But I do know how to convert micrograms to milligrams. Remember how to do it? There are 10 to the negative 6 micrograms, and I put the micrograms on the bottom because I want them to cancel out, per 1 milligram. So my micrograms cancel out, my milligrams end up canceling out, and if I multiply all this stuff out, I end up with 0.6 milliliters per minute. Okay. And we're almost done. Do you see what the problem with this is? Um, we need to convert to the per hour. So convert to um, so we need to convert to the right units. So that's the the next step. Um, <coughs> so how do we convert? We have our milliliters, but we need this guy to be in hours. So we're giving six milliliters per minute, and there are 60 minutes per hour. I'm putting my hours on the bottom because, right, I want hours in the end, and if I put the minutes on the top, look what happens, they cancel out. So you end up with 36 uh, milliliters per hour. Okay. So my lower limit is 36 milliliters per hour, and I'm going to write that up here so I remember because I'm going to have to erase since I ran out of room. 36 milliliters per hour. All right. Okay, so we've got the lower limit. Now we need the upper limit. And so it's the same, pretty much the same exact steps. It's just now instead of calculating this with the two micrograms per kilogram per minute, can you see which one I'm going to use now? Yeah, I'm going to use the upper limit, the four micrograms that, have, as the up, what, that have, has been ordered as the upper limit. All right. So we're going to do the same thing, but now we're just going to use the, we're going to calculate the upper limit. Okay. And so I can see from what's been ordered, the Dose for the patient is 4 micrograms per kilogram per minute. Okay. So that's my dose for the patient. And again, my patient weighs 60 kilograms, so I'm going to multiply it by 60. My kilograms are going to cancel out. <coughs> and I end up with 240 micrograms per minute. All right. So now I just have to figure, now I go on to the next step. So I have the dose for based for, on my patient's weight. So now the next step is to use the amount of medication, amount of the drug in the solution to figure out how many milliliters of the solution I'm going to give. So I have my 240 micrograms per minute, and I'm going to multiply by the 60 milligrams per 300 milliliters, but I'm going to put, again, the milliliters on the top because I want to have milliliters per unit of time, and the 60 grams on the bottom, or excuse me, milligrams on the bottom. So we're almost there, but there's a problem again, right? My milligrams and my micrograms don't cancel out. But I can convert micrograms to milligrams because I know there are 10 to the minus 6 micrograms per 1 milligram. And so this guy cancels out. My milligrams cancel out. And when I do 240 times 300, divide by 10 to the negative 6 times 60, right, you should end up with 1.2 milliliters per minute. Okay. Almost there. We're in the home stretch. So I have 1.2 milliliters per minute, but do you know the last step? We have to convert to 
milliliters per hour. So I have it in per minute, but I know there are 60 minutes in an hour. Minutes cancel out, so you end up with 72 milliliters per hour. So there we go. My lower limit is 36 milliliters per hour. So to fill the order, you would have between 36 and 72 milliliters per hour. And that's it. So you have an upper limit, a lower limit that you need to calculate, and it's the same process for calculating each one of them. First, calculate the dose for the patient based on the weight. Um, figure out how much of the IV solution to give based on that. And then last, check and make sure you have the uh, correct units, milliliters per hour or cc's per minute or whatever is being given.